is it now cheaper to run a petrol or diesel car over an electric car? Well, today's video, we're gonna be looking into all these things, including home charging, business charging, charging at say, I don't know, a public charger if you haven't got a home charger. That does exist for some people. And more importantly, what is the price break even point between fuel and electric? Now we're gonna be looking at the cost per mile because that's the fairest metric to use when comparing the cost of a fuel source to the cost of what you get out. That will be looking at the cost of the fuel, then dividing that by the amount of range you get, distance, miles per gallon, and then working out what that costs pence per mile is. Now, it's worth worth noting very, very importantly, this video is purely based around costs. This is not based around environmental needs, and if you care about the environment, because if you did, then EV is really the only choice at the moment. But this is purely based around cost, so we'll, we'll be using very, very unfair figures for the electric vehicle at 3.5 miles per kilowatt, which EVs can you know easily do over. There's a lot of EVs that do a lot more than that. So, but we're gonna be using that as a really, really mean basis for the EV. And for petrol diesel cars, we're gonna be using a diesel car, and we're gonna be using a diesel car that does 50 miles per gallon. So first of all, if you are on Octopus Go charging at 7.5p, your cost per mile for the electric vehicle will be two pence per mile. Now I've not done the business rate because I've been told it's 21p, but at the time I'm talking, it's rough details have only just been released, it's gonna change around a bit. So we'll do the price cap for general consumers on what you'll be paying from October, and that will be 34p a kilowatt hour, and that works out at an amazing 10 pence per mile. So super, super cheap there. Now, if you're in an ICE car, you're gonna be paying roughly 172 a litre for diesel, and that cost per mile is 16p. And the tipping point is where it's the same as fuel for an EV, you'd have to be paying 57p a kilowatt hour. And we'll come back to this uh, price tipping point in a minute. Now let's get something straight. Using 3.5 miles per kilowatt is extremely low for an EV and changing it to four miles per kilowatt hour, which is a fair figure for an uh, you know, electric car these days and only 0.5 higher, it doesn't seem a lot, but it makes a massive difference to that tipping point that we saw compared to the diesel vehicle that we looked at. In fact, changing the figure from 3.5 to four miles per kilowatt hour changes the tipping point between diesel and electric to 65p a mile. And that means straight away, looking at that difference of 65p, it's more than double the current energy price cap. Well, it's not more than double, but it's quite close to double the current energy price cap that's been set there by government for the next two years. So if you can charge it home, it's quite obvious that an electric car is going to be cheaper than charging or, or fueling a petrol, hybrid or diesel car for quite some time, but what if you can't charge at home? Well, before we get to that, let's talk about the diesel car that we used. Now, we used 50 miles per gallon for the diesel. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've not seen many drivers, many people get an actual 50 miles per gallon out of their diesel car. Now, I mentioned the tipping point for two reasons, and one of those reasons is if you basically have 99% of your charging at home, 98% of your charging at home, and do some public charging. Public charging is more expensive, but the average between charging at home and charging in public means that that cost per mile, that basic rough cost between the two, should average out that it's still way below diesel and petrol. I mean, if you can charge at home, you're not charging on public charges 24 seven, you're gonna be charging at home most of the time, because it's where you're spending your most amount of time asleep, not using the car, and the car can be plugged in. And if you can charge at work, again, that you're gonna be around about 21 pence per kilowatt hour, it's still very, very far under a petrol per mile cost, even with some expensive rapid charging in between. But what if you can't charge at home? If you only use public chargers, you have basically two options. You have AC electric and DC electric. AC chargers are more than likely going to always be the cheapest option between the two. The difference between AC and DC is AC tends to be a slower, 22 kilowatts or below, and DC tends to be a lot faster, usually starting at about 50 kilowatts, going up to 350 kilowatts, and the faster the charger, usually the more expensive your pay 
for using those chargers. Now, I am gonna divert my eyes occasionally towards my script because it's got a lot of numbers for this part, but if you charge on BP's AC chargers, you can charge at 44p a kilowatt hour, which even using my 3.5 miles per kilowatt figure before means 13 pence a mile, which is considerably cheaper than a petrol or diesel car but it will require £7.85 monthly subscription. But even with that subscription, you're still gonna be cheaper than petrol and diesel. And if you're charging regularly on these charges, it's well worth that £7.85 subscription. Now using their app and not paying for membership means that the price does come up to 55p a kilowatt, but it's still only 16 pence per mile. Now, if you wanna charge on DC charges, this gets a little bit more complex. So using the 3.5 miles per kilowatt still, the cheapest options are grid serve, which are the motorway charges. All the ones on the motorway and motorway service stations tend to be grid serve. They have a massive uh, hub at their own places. Uh, their own hubs are even cheaper than these prices that I'm gonna quote, but we'll quote the ones that tend to be the most common along the motorway service stations. Grid serve come in at 48p a kilowatt hour, meaning it's 14 pence a mile to charge on them, which is considerably cheaper than diesel and petrol. But if you wanna charge on their more powerful 150 kilowatt chargers or above, they're a little bit rarer to be seen by grid serve, but their cheapest here is 50p a kilowatt hour. Um, 14 pence per mile, that works out. Now, BP and Instavolt, they're more common uh, faster rapid chargers and they are coming in at two prices with their you know more than 150 kilowatt chargers. BP membership, it takes it to 55p per, um, pence per kilowatt hour and 67p a kilowatt hour without membership, which takes it to about 19p a mile. Now, a couple of caveats, you're probably not gonna be charging on rapid chargers 24 seven, even if you haven't got a home charger, you're gonna be doing some mixing of possibly free chargers, some cheaper AC chargers, and a mix of the high powered rapid chargers, but even just charging on the rapid chargers, you'll see it's still cheaper than fuel. Now, just before I wrote this script, Offspray increased their price to one pound a kilowatt hour, considerably more than the petrol and diesel cars would be to you know per mile. However, the government price cap for businesses has just been discussed today, and Osprey have already said they will drop their prices. Now, one thing they did say, Osprey, in their email when they increased their prices, is that the government charged 20% VAT on public charging. Now, if this dropped in line to 5%, that would be a 15% reduction on all EV charging. Now, if you think this should happen, let me know down below in the comments. If you want to learn more about the government price cap for home energy, what it means for if you're in a fixed tariff that's over the price cap of 35p, what it means if you're in a government price cap way over 35p, and what it means if you're on Octopus Go or another variable deal like that, then check out this video right here. That's all about the government price cap.